we did have a question from Baltimore Kane. What defensive tackles are we targeting for the next class? Well, we already have a commitment from Savion Collins at Palmetto, but pretty much everybody knows that uh, he's going to flip to Florida eventually, uh, sooner or later. So, like, we have one, but really not. Um, and it's the thing where, like, you know, he's basically pushing for Florida and his mom wants him at Miami, but then they went up to Florida and he's like, hey, mom is getting warm to the idea of Florida, which, you know, when – you share that with recruiting writers who are assembled at an event unbidden, unasked, really. Uh, just like, hey, how, how is your recruiting going? You know, I love those open-ended questions that people have started asking and let the kids tell you the stuff. Because if you say, hey, my name is Cam Underwood. I blog about Miami. Tell me about Miami. Da, 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 da. You're already setting the path of the conversation. But if you go and say, hey, I'm a blogger with SB Nation. I was wondering about your recruitment or whatever. You know, how are things going? What are your top five? And they share that without any prompting, that's where you really know where they're going. You know what I mean? Or where they're looking at. So we have uh, currently Savion Collins. I don't think that that's going to happen. So then you have his teammate, Leonard Taylor at Palmetto, uh, who's a higher rated player, a five star instead of a four star. But I mean, both of them, I will take on my team any day of the week and twice on Sunday. Um, that's a guy who has an offer as well. Um, Taiwan Malone from Bergen Catholic in Jersey. He has an offer. George Rooks from St. Peter's in New Jersey has an offer. Uh, Desmond Watson from Armwood, Anthony Hundley, um, who was committed to Miami but then flipped to LSU, is at Booker T. Washington. He's the guy with an offer. Uh, Alan Hay from Chaminade, and if you know the name Chaminade, we've gotten a lot of guys from there recently. He's a guy who has an offer, and there's another couple of guys who probably have gotten offers recently and we might be evaluating, but um, there's probably no no kid who's 6'2", 275 and up, whether in height or weight who can play defensive tackle that we're not looking at. Um, so I think that the board is going to expand a lot um, in the future, especially with the likely chance that Savion Collins is going to end up going elsewhere. Orange and green blood. Cam, do you have any indication of what Manny did last year during our bye weeks to make us play so poorly after the bye week? How can this be corrected? I think that I don't have like – the inside baseball knowledge of this was the schedule. These were the, um, the, the, the segments of practice, the thing I don't have that knowledge, but to me, Manny talking about changing things up to get a better product. I think the change week over week of the bye weeks was the problem because I think that you need consistency and, Minor tweaks, I think, would have been better than wholesale changes, which is what we're finding. But again, I made this analogy and I say it again. When I was a first year teacher, I did not even have a bag of tricks to reach into. You know, because people say, oh, go into your bag of tricks and pull out a new trick. I didn't even have a bag to put the tricks in. That's how ill prepared or without the knowledge of the job I was to do that. And then I learned, okay, now I need to have a bag. Now I need to put these tricks in the bag so that when I'm doing my thing, teaching and learning or, you know, teaching and training my kids to sing, all those things, if that didn't work, cool, I got a different thing. Cool, I got a different trick. Cool, I got a different trick because I have the experience to be able to do that. I think Manny Diaz was in the same situation last year as a, in terms of being a head coach where he did not even have a bag in which to put his tricks. So then he was just swinging for the fences. Hey, I'm going to try some stuff. I'm going to do this differently. I'm going to do that differently. I'm going to just change things up whole scale because he had to get that experience because he didn't have that experience. And I hope that that was a learning experience for him to kind of get that bag of tricks and now start putting those tricks in the bag so that if things are going wrong, like they sometimes will, you can course correct a little bit easier. Um, but yeah, in, in general, to the answer of your question, I think that the massive changes, like the wholesale changes of the paradigm in the bye week week over week over week during the buy, I think that that was more of the issue than me pointing out the specific, you know, oh, we did an Oklahoma drill or we did a cat and mouse drill or we did seven on seven for eight minutes instead of seven. I don't have the schedule for practice, but, uh, and again, I'm going based upon what Manny Diaz has said that they did. He came out and said, I've changed things from the ground up during this bye week. But if you do that four times in the course of one season, I think that change is what unsettled the team throughout the year. And it just started to go bad and some guys quit. And you had injuries on top of that. And the offense was terrible.